The Independent Living Fund was originally set up to enable disabled people with high or complex support needs to live independently in the community. People like Simon. It allowed me to kind of live my life as, well, along the lines as everyone else does really. Um, it's given me sort of the choice and the control over, over what I do when I do it. What levels of support does the ILF provide for you at the moment and what will that become once these transitions take place? Their offer is to cut my daytime support down to six hours and take away completely my nighttime assistance, um, stating that I could use incontinence equipment. Uh, the loss of dignity, the loss of choice of control over, over my life, that will be a huge impact. Um, I, There'll be, there'll be things that I just won't be able to sort of do anymore, I guess. As of today, funds from the ILF that were previously paid direct to recipients will instead be transferred to local authorities. Crucially, those local authorities are under no obligation to protect or ring-fence that funding. Many disabled people fear that with council budgets being squeezed, that this will result in a reduction of their care and support provision leading to a loss of the one thing the Independent Living Fund was set up to provide, their independence. Choice and control has been a key phrase in the disability movement. In the 1980s and 90s, disabled people took to direct action to campaign for the right to make their own decisions about the care and support they received. Some people now fear that those rights are being eroded. I think disabled people have two worries at the moment. One is uncertainty about what will happen. Uh, lots of people are going through assessments even as we speak, despite the fact that these changes are coming into force um, now and over the next year. And the second is long-term uncertainty. Because the money is being devolved with no strings attached, there is, of course, the potential that local authorities will choose to spend this money on other things in the long term, particularly in an era where there's less money around. In a statement tonight, the government said it encourages local authorities to use any surplus funds to provide further social care and believes disabled people's needs can be better served at a local level. By bringing support for independent living fund clients into a single care support system managed by local authorities, we are allowing decisions to be made locally by democratically elected councillors, enabling a more efficient, integrated and personalised service for everyone needing support. Local authorities believe that consolidating social care into one place makes better sense for them and for the disabled people they support, provided they are given the resources to do so. Are there any benefits in these changes for disabled people? I think one of the benefits of the changes is that it acknowledges that local government is in a better position to look after its own residents uh, than some remote government department because obviously we work with our residents closely, we know who they are and more what their needs are. The disadvantage is that we might not get sufficient money to do that and that's obviously a worry for us because the government has slashed, is slashing and promises to slash even more money from our budgets. While the arguments continue at a national level, many ILF recipients like Simon face difficult choices about how to maintain their independence. It's very much up in the air at the moment and it's kind of the, the stress of it, oh, particularly because it's been coming for the last five years, has been huge, huge. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't actually know how, what the outcome is going to be, to be honest. <laughs>